everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. As you may or may not know, mental health resources and treatment and therapy have been increasingly more difficult to access over the years, mostly because the people that need therapy can't afford it because it's so expensive. Just one therapy session can cost you upwards of $150 and if you're doing one therapy session a week, that's like $600. I knew that. Duh. So that's $600 a month. Most people cannot afford to pay $600 a month just to be able to function well mentally. Like it, it shouldn't be that expensive, but unfortunately it is. So I wanted to film this video today to provide you guys with five free or low cost alternatives to therapy that I personally think are really, really great. I'm so shocked that these things are not more widespread because I think that they're really helpful and I wish I had known about a lot of them before, but here we are. So I'm going to be sharing those with you today. I promise that they're really good. So if you would like to find out what they are, please keep on watching. So number one, and this is an obvious one, but I did just want to get it out of the way first because there are a lot of therapists, most therapists I would say, accept clients on a sliding scale. If you let them know that you're not able to afford their services, you know, because you're a student, you're unemployed, you're just financially struggling, a lot of them will cater their prices kind of to towards your budget or at the very least decrease their prices significantly. A resource I recently discovered here in Canada is called the Affordable Therapy Network and they basically connect you with a bunch of different therapists in your area that cater to lower costs and people that are financially struggling and I think that that's really cool I'll leave a link to them down in the description if you want to check them out it's so cool it's right now the service is just for Canada but I'm sure wherever you live in the world if you search up low-cost therapy near me you'll be able to find a lot of different things that will probably be very helpful if the search proves to be unhelpful and you can't find anybody in your area that's kind of operating within your budget I would really suggest you talk to your family physician again if you live in Canada a lot of the times they can help refer you to subsidized services services that are completely covered by the government they could also help run some physical tests on you to make sure that you know your mental health issues are not stemming from a physical source which can also be really helpful they could refer you to a psychiatrist if they find that you may need medication so all in all I think just talking to your family physician is always a good step to take before trying anything else if you find that your budget just absolutely cannot accommodate any type of cost even if it's low cost don't worry there's still options for you the four other options I'm gonna talk about now are all completely free so don't worry we got you covered number two is bounce back coaching now this is a service that was started by the Canadian Mental Health Association and I am honestly mind blown at the fact that I've never heard of this before and basically this service utilizes cognitive behavioral therapy which is a common treatment method that therapists will use usually when trying to help people dealing with depression or anxiety Oftentimes therapists will use CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, and this treatment method really focuses on helping you reframe your negative thoughts, disrupting automatic negative thinking, and just kind of helping you essentially rewire your brain and kind of get it working well again. It's been proven to be effective in treating mild to moderate depression, anxiety, and, and multiple other disorders. Bounce back coaching essentially is taking CBT from the therapist's office to you. So they're providing you with videos, worksheets, workbooks, resources, all kinds of things to help you take all that information and apply it to yourself. Essentially be your own therapist and figure out what you need to do, how you can start to break those negative associations in your own mind. And not only that, but you'll also have access to six phone calls with a licensed mental health coach who will help guide you through the process to make sure that you're getting the most out of it. If you have any questions, if you're struggling, if something's not working, they'll be there for you to schedule a phone call with them and get some guidance. And it's all free, even the phone calls. It is all completely 100% free. So I think it's amazing. I don't know why the service is not more widely advertised because I think it's great. So I will link that in the description below as well if you would like to check it out. They specifically recommend it for people who are struggling, like I said, with mild to moderate depression or anxiety. So if that sounds like you, check it out. Number three, keynote speeches and lectures. This one is my 
personal favorite and ever since I've kind of discovered this, it's just been my go-to for any of my problems. Basically, we live in an age where so much information is being published online at any given second. People from every different type of profession are consistently publishing their findings, you know, on YouTube videos, books, blogs, articles, everything. And mental health professionals are no different. So something I've recently discovered is that on YouTube, there are so many different videos, recordings of either mental health lectures, mental health conferences, all these different types of things where you have licensed therapists, professors, doctors coming out and giving a lecture on their current methods and treating certain disorders on what they do with their clients to help them overcome certain things. And it's pretty much like you're hearing firsthand from a therapist what they would do to treat you if you were in their office. So you can just take that information and roll with it and just use it yourself. If you know the particular issue you're struggling with, let's say, you know, you think you have social anxiety. I go online and I type up overcoming social anxiety lecture or keynote speaker. And if I scroll down enough, I'll be sure to find some type of keynote lecture or speech or class or something given by a licensed professional. This is what I stress, don't just open up any video by someone like, this is how I overcame my social anxiety. I mean, those are cute and all, but the stress here is that you want the knowledge, you want the facts, you want the information, you want the information coming directly from these licensed professionals. You find all this information about what this therapist would do and the current methods that he or she is using to treat social anxiety. If I do the same thing for, you know, overcoming body dysmorphic disorder, if I scroll down enough, I'll find a lecture that's talking about current treatment methods for body dysmorphic disorder and what this particular therapist would do. Now, obviously these videos are not gonna be the most entertaining thing in the world. They are lectures after all, but again, it's. It's the information you're there for. You're not there to be entertained. You're there because you're having a problem and you wanna know how to fix it. And these lectures can be very, very, very helpful in doing that. So I would 100% recommend that. Do not underestimate the power of your own research abilities. Number four is mental health apps. Now, obviously this is not a permanent fix or a permanent solution. You still would have to probably do one of the three options I listed earlier, but what mental health apps are really helpful with is really helping you up your self-care game and upping your self-care game can help you just become more functional in other aspects of your life and feel a bit more control over your life which will really help you and motivate you for this you know long mental health journey you have ahead learning how to meditate learning how to be mindful learning how to cultivate healthy habits. All of these things will help you overall in your mental health journey and will help you come to a sense of balance in your life and a sense of peace. And you know, you can't ever have too much peace and balance in your life, especially in this chaotic world. So I will be leaving a list of my favorite mental health apps, which I've personally used and love down below. If you'd like a video of me going in depth on some of my favorite mental health apps and how they've helped me personally really up my self care game, I would love to do that, just let me know. But yeah, they'll all be down below, all the apps that I love. And number five, finally, call a helpline. This is also not a permanent solution, but it's something that I think can be really helpful, especially if you are experiencing a lot of distress in one particular moment versus a chronic thing. I think that helplines often get a bad rep because no one really knows what they do. No one really knows what happens when you call. As someone who volunteers with a helpline myself, I can tell you anything goes. You can literally be feeling the slightest bit of discomfort about anything in your life and just need to vent and you can call. Literally the only prerequisite to calling a helpline is that you feel like you need to get something off of your chest and you want to talk and that's all and you'll have someone there who will listen to you and who will talk to you and you can try to brainstorm solutions with them and just have a vent buddy basically and it can be really helpful when you're feeling really overwhelmed and just kind of need to get it out and don't feel comfortable talking to your friends or family about it and especially if you're kind of not going to a therapist and you're kind of doing therapy on yourself and you're using workbooks and watching videos and doing research and you're kind of making all these changes, sometimes you still need to talk to someone. I think one of the things that people love the most about therapy is not just that the person is giving them solutions, but that they have kind of this listening ear and someone that can validate them and empower them and make them feel heard. And a helpline can do that for you. Obviously they're not therapists, but I think if you're combining it with some of the other things on this list and combining it with, you know, doing your own work on yourself and really just trying to improve, it can help just to have a listening ear. Sometimes you just need an anonymous person to vent to and that's okay. So just try it. If you haven't tried it before, try it. I'll put a list of like some 
helplines down below in Canada. Again, if you live outside of Canada, just search up helpline in your area and I'm sure there's a lot. There's one for everything nowadays too. If you have an eating disorder, a substance addiction, you know, you're in an abusive relationship, there's a, there's a helpline for anything. Right, so that's it for the alternatives. I really hope that you guys found it helpful. I hope that you can leave this video with at least one kind of new action plan for your mental health journey and one thing that you want to try. If you are gonna try any of them, let me know down below because I would love to hear it. And let me know, comment down below, what is something other than therapy that has really helped you with your mental health? You know, in the past, if you're doing it right now, I would love to hear it. I'm sure other people would love to hear it. And yeah. I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share it with anyone who you think might find it helpful. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.